Welcome to Plant Perfect. I'm Jason Oliver Nixon. I am one half of the High Point, North Carolina based lifestyle firm Madcap Cottage. My partner John and I are known for bringing the great outdoors in with our designs. We love looking to the garden for inspiration. And we have a great group with us today. We have uh, Justin Hancock, who's out in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, Justin Hancock is a consumer horticulturist whose background includes publishing. He was a former garden editor for Better Homes and Gardens, running an independent garden center, a landscape design work, and brand marketing at Costa Farms, the world's largest grower of indoor plants. Hancock has been a guest on local and national media, including NBC's Today Show and the Wall Street Journal and more. He lives in gardens outside of Portland, Oregon, but has hands-on experience in Minneapolis, Miami, and Des Moines, Iowa, where Better Homes and Gardens is based. With his background, he can cover house plants and outdoor tropical, annual, and perennial container landscape topics. And then we have Jenny um, excuse me, Jenny Brown in Chicago, who's a fabulous designer, who if you're not following her on Instagram, you must immediately. She's fantastic. Jenny is known for her layered, nuanced designs that pair tradition with a delicious, unexpected twist. Says Jenny, I love mixing antiques and vintage finds with bold pops of color. And I always look to fashion, travel, and history for guidance. After graduating from Kenyon College, Brown headed west and landed a job at the esteemed Wiseman Group Interiors in San Francisco. In her words, out of her league and knowing nothing, Brown dove in and learned the trade day by day. It was an amazing training, Brown says. She eventually returned to Chicago to work for design force Alessandra Branca. After seven years at Branca, Brown took a brief pause with the arrival of her first child and decided to hang up her own uh, shingle and her eponymous firm was born. I have amazing clients, says Jenny, and feel like a kid in a candy store. So there you go. Um, but the theme today is houseplants. And I'm, I'm a garden enthusiast, Justin is super knowledgeable. And I would say that Jenny is an enthusiast as well, but we're gonna talk about house plants and how we use them in our interiors. And I love a good quote. I often use Mae West as one of my good quotes. And the singer Beth Ditto, who used to be with the gossip said, a beautiful plant is like having a friend around the house. And I think in the last couple of months when it's been kind of gloomy and doom, you know, gloom and doom, having plants in my office and in my house, house plants have really brightened my spirits. And I, I've found that I tend to like my house plants more than I like most people. So Justin, how have, I'd love to see some images and Celeste, maybe you could start feeding these, some images of how you've used house plants in home decor schemes or how you've put them to use in great ways and walk us through some of the great plants that people can use uh, in different environments. Um, absolutely, the, the plant on the, on the left on the screen here, this is called a, a red aglaonema. Um, and I really love how it adds a pop of color. It's beautiful all year long. It's also one of the most durable. Uh, my first rule when I'm, whenever I'm doing anything with plants is to pick the right plant for the right space. Um, and this one makes it so easy because it does low light, it does medium light, it does high light, it does low humidity, it does high, high humidity. Um, it's also great for adding a seasonal punch of color um, and fun to change around the, the pot um, so that you can give it a different personality at a different time of year. And, and do you um, to, collect pots, Justin, on your kind of on your on your travels? I mean, are you always kind of looking for really interesting pieces? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, sometimes the 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 pot can give the the plant a completely different look. And you know, you've been living with this plant for five years, you love it. Uh, you put it in a different pot and it feels fresh and new and you know makes your decor just totally different. Love it. Oh, this this is a great plant. What is this, Justin? Uh, this is called Begonia maculata. Uh, this is one of the, the trendiest houseplants around right now because it has those silver polka dots on the leaves. Um, that contrast between the, the burgundy and the, the dark green, um, just outstanding. Um, and, you know, this is an example of how I like to try to play off the decor. Um, that painting really mimics the, the, the leaves in some way, both in shape, texture, and color. Um, and so whenever I can find cues to, to work with a plant in a room, I always like to do that. And what do we have, what a great environment this is. It's very minimal, but those house plants really warm it up. Exactly, you know, I think this is a great example of how plants add life. Um, you know, especially if you like clean modern design, um, they're, they're, they're welcoming um, without being over the top, without making it feel out of place. There's something classic about a, a house plant um, and it, it's never going to go out of style. You know, they're, um, when, when we were talking before, I, I mentioned how, you know, like as a designer, I'm always afraid inside that a pattern or a color is going to go out of style. And you said, you know, you know, never have to worry about that. But 
Uh, plants never do. You know, a fiddle leaf fig 10, 15, 30 years from now, nobody's going to say, oh, that's so out of date because plants just have this, this beautiful classicism to them. And I would say that about decor schemes too, that if you use florals in your design schemes, I mean, granted Mario, what Mario Boada was doing in the eighties is very different from the chintz that we're seeing that chintz is on the cover of, of House and Garden UK uh, this month, but bringing florals in, you know, I like to say if it works in your garden, it'll work in your home. And that doesn't mean that they're not necessarily timeless, but you know, Jenny has an amazing house that she goes up to in Michigan and I'm sure it has great florals from 30 years ago that are back. And, and that idea of, of plants really having that, that timeless quality. Justin, let's see another, I'd love to see another shot. You know, I also really like to, to try to mix it up and plants that have color like that aglaonema that we talked about before. You know, here we have a, a purple passion plant and a pink waffle plant mixed in with just a couple of variegated, there's a Gipsina, um, there's a false aurelia and an, an ivy. Um, and just these punches of color a lot of people find plants to be, be green. And so when you can pull in color, it's really unexpected and fun. Um, and it also is a, is a great way to, to make a display pop. Those are beautiful, wow. And we, you, a lot of people tend to focus on the, on the big plants because it's big, it's obvious, it's a great statement. Uh, but a bunch of little plants can give you that same feel. Um, here um, in some shelves that we did in Miami, just did some pothos, some succulents, um, another aglaonema, you know, and just as little touches, um, you know, the same way that, that you would use knickknacks, except they're they're beautiful, they're timeless, they're they're simple. So, so this is a great example of, of how it's really important to choose the right plant for the right space. Um, most ferns are really loving humidity, and so they're great in kitchens and bathrooms, but especially in the north, you know, they may sulk in living rooms, dining rooms, and dens because there's just not that enough moisture in the air. And, you know, I, I think this is too a, a fun example of how I was able to find a fun pot that really blends with the, with the surroundings to make the plant pop rather than having the, the plant be a, a focus as well. There's a, or, or here on the, the far right, um, this is a plant called ZZ plant. And this is another one that you can grow anywhere. And so if you want to create a consistent look from room to room, you can repeat it here and there and there um, because it can do high light, it can do low light, it can do low humidity, it can do high humidity. Um, you could practically keep it in a garage and, and it'll be happy. On that note, Emily has a question. And I think this is a good slide to represent that. She would like, to, like our advice on mixing leaf textures and shapes. Jenny, can I throw that, not to put you on the spot, but can I throw that to you in terms of how do you feel about kind of mixing, you know, if that's a snake plant, how do you feel about mixing something pointier with something more, more palmy in a room? Oh, I think I, so we have some planters in my kitchen. I mean, I almost want to run you in there, but we have some planters in my kitchen. Um, I, I think mixing the plants together in, in a uniform plant planter is, um, I think it makes it more interesting. And I was even just looking at um, the images we were just looking at, I loved how you had the same planter, uniform planters with different shapes and sizes. And I feel like that's much more interesting. I also have used plants to um, stage bookshelves before. And again, plants that don't necessarily need a lot of light in my case, because they don't have a lot of natural light coming in. But I feel like that's a great way if you've got like a, a, a ceramic pitcher or even you know, just a, a plant or a ceramic pitcher or something else that you wouldn't necessarily put a plant in or just a bowl, like a shallow bowl, putting different heights of plants in there in a bookshelf, like really just adds a lot of interest to it and brings a little like literal life to the space um, where otherwise it can feel kind of flat or cluttery. Cause there is something about plants, even just like a mash of plants, as long as they're mostly alive, like they don't, it doesn't feel cluttered because they, they're alive, you know, it's like, oh, this is like our plant family, you know? So with that said, Jenny, could you walk us through a couple of your design, with some of your amazing designs and, and kind of tell us about the designs and how you've used house plants and some of these, like this amazing kind of coral, this beautiful kind of coral red room. So in this space, this is actually for a club um, in the Western suburbs. And as we were designing the space, it like, it just kept sticking in my mind. I'm like, we're going to need to bring some palms in here because this, this room um, 
it's almost like a little bit darker red than that, um, but it's a, a space for you know multiple gatherings. Um, and we tried to create all these different seating areas. I, I guess every room I feel like wants to have a little bit of green in it. And sometimes it's just a plant. If that's the way we can get it, that's the way we can get it. But, I'd love, um, love to see another shot. That's gorgeous. Okay, so here are the other, okay, so here are the same palms, and this is definitely one of the rooms. So you can see the other room beyond. And so yes, we flank them on this side. And I mean the space is pretty without them, but again, I, I feel like that just here they just add so much. And you walk in and you're kind of transported. And I feel like that's um that's what this kind of dramatic gestures with houseplants can do is it it it's a little bit unexpected and you just and there's something about it that just kind of amps up. Um, any space, just one big plant, even if it's just in the corner of someone's, you know, studio apartment, like a big plant there, there's something that just adds, um, I think my, one of my new favorite expressions is uh, Jonathan Adler. I was on a call like this with him and he was talking about how every room should have a little swagger. And sometimes just some big bold palm is like, there it is. Like, it's just a, a bold gesture that is um, a little unexpected. And so I feel like the, the plants can bring the swagger, especially in a, a more kind of traditional setting. I love, I, love uh, that, I love the idea of kind of timeless and, but also you switching out your pots that you can go for just in some of those images you shoot, you showed were very much more minimal where Jenny, your design aesthetic is a, perhaps in the, you know, more in the anti-mame kind of a little bit more, no, I'm not gonna say maximalist, but a little bit more, more traditional um, and, and switching out those pots with something that might be, a, you know, a great cabbage leaf that's very kind of that Portugal Palm Beachy kind of vibe, or with Justin going for something that's very gray, Calvin Klein, very spare, but switching those out and you can really change out your pots and take the money look in a very different way and take it more minimal or take it more maximal and, and have some yeah. fun. I love that idea. <laughs> no, and I do have to say for anyone out there, if you are buying plants, I bought two of these, um, these money plants, they're called Pelia. When I was at this garden, probably, a year ago, two years ago, and they have, I can't believe we've kept them alive this long, but we have, and then we've had to replant them and repot them. And now we, I think we've got about six pots going with them. And I like, they just have stayed alive. So this is a great plant and it's really, um, it's got these kind of fun rounded leaves. It's unusual. Um, and it's just, you know, I think it brings good luck too. So um, this is a good, and I, I'm not a, I, I love the plants, but I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm like the major green thumb. So if, if we can keep these alive and have them keep, kind of reproducing, um, you can too. But speaking of that, Justin, can you talk to us about houseplants and, and, and for any of us who might be, you know, for anybody out there who might be scared of houseplants and kind of what are your favorites or, or, or what do you look for with, with how, do you, how do you pair, you know, a, an environment with a, with a plant perhaps? You know, so, so like I said before, I always start with the, the environment to make sure that I'm able to provide the right conditions. Um, you know, because no plant is going to be happy in an environment it doesn't like. Um, and so, so checking and, and being really honest about your conditions, uh, first starting with light um, and a, a great tip because plant tags, you know, there's such a tiny amount of real estate to try to explain such a concept like the plant care. Um, so like in terms of light, uh, a great general rule is if a tag says high light, um, that the, where the plant is, is going to cast a strong shadow throughout a lot of the day. Medium light, it'll be a soft shadow, and low light, there might not be much of a shadow at all. Um, and then one, one fun tip too, um, is that light is pretty much a sliding scale. You can always go up. So if a tag says low light, that plant is also gonna be able to grow in medium and bright light as well. Uh, but a highlight plant will be able to go down the scale to low light. Oh, and then in terms of, of watering, you know, it's, it's really kind of being honest with yourself and how much uh, attention am I going to give it? Um, to make sure that it doesn't a um, you know die of neglect, and I, I only water it you know once once a month, or um, I love it so much that I feel like I need to water it every day. Um, and you know there are plants that will fit both ends of the spectrum. You just need to make sure that you're you're finding the plant that's going to work for that. And how about fertilizer? I mean, that's that, I think that adds another layer of scariness to people. And and do you really need to go out and buy your Miracle Grows or those kind of things, or or where, where's your head with all of that? You know, fertilizer is like the most complicated, easy concept there is in houseplants um, because it, it's up to you. Um, plants don't, don't need fertilizer um, to grow. Um, you know, if, if you keep them for more than a couple of years, fertilizer definitely helps push growth. It's going to give you better leaf color. Um, you know, but the average person who has a plant maybe a year or two, fertilizer is not really necessary. 
the easiest way to go about fertilizer is to buy something called a time release fertilizer. Um, like Osmocote is one major brand. Um, it's these little granules. You just put them in the soil. They release fertilizer for a few months. Um, you just need to do that once a year and you're done. So it's, it's super simple. If you want to be more hands-on and use something like a miracle Grow, where you mix it with water, you know, once a week, um, you know, you can do that. But the easy way is just to, you know, to do some time release granules. Well, guys, it's Friday night, so we all need to go have cocktails, I think. So I'm thrilled to have had Justin, who knows so much, is such a knowledgeable force, and, and Jenny, who's such a talent in the design space. And be sure you're following Jenny and Justin on Instagram. They have great, great feeds and really, really, really fun stories and are just full of life and energy. And I'm at Madcap Cottage. And to end on this note, so thank you everybody for joining us. Um, and this is a little bit of a cheesy end quote, but Lady Bird Johnson said, where flowers bloom, so does hope. So I think that that's a nice way to end. Everyone have a great weekend. Happy Friday. Send photos of your, of your house plants this summer. And thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it for, uh, for, for Plant Perfect. <laughs>